Hello guys and welcome to a new Warno video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you the second of the quarterfinals from the Warno opening tournament, the first tournament of many to come in Warno. It was run by the Simulated Divisions League, so again, big thanks to them. But this one is going to be between Derek and Colonel Koenig. Today they are playing on two ways, and on our left in the red we have Derek using the third armoured on the NATO side, and on our right in the blue we have Colonel Koenig who is also using the third armoured on the NATO side. So we've already got uh, a little bit of a change from the last game that we've seen with some recon units going down. I don't believe uh, recon was really used much in the last competitive game we watched. Um, in this case, we've got both the M13A calves on the side of Derek and then the M1 M3A1 Bradley CFE on the side of Colonel Koenig. Now the M113A3 uh, benefits much like the military police from having the M67 recoilless launcher, which is really, really good for taking out uh, light armored targets and can definitely kill off a Bradley pretty fast if it gets caught out. Uh, but the great thing about these M113A cabs is if you go up against, say, the 79th on the on the Soviet side, then you can kill a lot of their like fast-moving transports early on or fast-moving fast recon like the BRDMs because they just can't really match up to the recoilless rifle. Uh, in this case, I think the Bradley might still have a decent chance as long as it doesn't get into range of that recoilless, and that's like the benefit the Bradley has. It does have the tow to... Uh, missile so it can outrange those M113s but as long as the M113s are microed into decent positions then they can have a decent amount of pressure across the map. So let's have a quick look at the rest of the stuff going down here. So four M13A calves uh, they're going to be starting in their Vanguard deployment off of these zones and then on the bottom side here we're going to be seeing some engineers, two engineers with dragons, uh, there's going to be Stinger squad in there, two CVs which are going to be heading forwards and there's one capturing the back of the sector here. So yeah, both of those are aggressive CVs. Then he's got an Apache at the start with the 245 point Apache with eight Hellfire missiles and the Hydra rockets. There's the AH-1F with the Hydra rockets, OH-58CS with the air-to-air -air missiles and then another Cobra there with, again, Hydra rockets. On the top side, he's just got the two military police with the M67 at the moment. Might add to that later. Over on the side of Colonel Koenig, he is going to be having these two M3A1 Bradleys. They're going to be in the advanced vanguard zone. And then for his main force on this top side, it's going to be a Stinger C squad uh, with a scout squad. There's going to be engineers with the Dragon HGM uh, in the M113. There's a mechanized rifles and M35 truck, and then the chaparral there, which is the AA piece, and he's going to be capturing his home sector with the Mutt CP. Um, on the side, on the bottom side, he's going to be got give, getting the mechanized rifles. Sorry, uh, with the chaparral, which is the AA piece. There's going to be two M2A2 Bradley IFVs here, which come in with the fire teams that have Dragon squads or have Dragon H gems, and then there's another mechanized rifle at the back there with an engineer dragon in the M113 and that's your lot all right and we're off so let's see where these troops are heading looks like the M113 A3 A calves are going to be just trying to sneak into positions further up I'm surprised these have fast move commands rather than um, quick hunt commands uh, since you probably want to be able to engage any enemy armor that you spot if you bump into it sort of midway up the map uh, if you're not paying attention and the main reason that you can get away with doing that on these M113A cows is because your recoilless rifle actually matches the range of your 50 cows so um, you're going to be able to you know do plenty of well you're always going to be able to engage the armor at the maximum range without revealing yourself early pretty much. Um, but this M3A1 Bradley is actually heading to the center of the map to secure that early on. And this M1A3 is going to be heading down here, looking to sit in a position where it can get maybe line of sight across this field. Uh, but looks like Derek's actually going for a bit of a feint on the top side. He's only got the two military police there, plus those M113s. Uh, really like a, a big lack of forces up there. Now in Warno, uh, you can get away with that because due to there not being a front line there, like there is in Still Division 2, you basically 
force your opponent to get recon in and check before they can really push forwards. Whereas in a scenario in Star Division 2, if there's like no units in front of you, then the front line just pushes forwards and you, you have an idea of what's not there, basically. But the M3A1 has gone down very quickly. Uh, we're going to be seeing the Chaparral there. Look for the shutdown onto one of the Cobras. we got the Chaparral engaging the Apache. But this Apache, I think, managed to stun the Chaparral. Or at least the Chaparral doesn't have... Yeah, it is stunned, sorry. Doesn't have line of sight for now. And boom, well, Apache goes down as well. That's gone. The Cobra's gone. And that's a very explosive start. A very expensive start. For Derek, that is like 300, 400 points just blown out the sky by these chaparrals. Nice choice by Colonel Koenig to bring those in and just shut down Derek's early air play. And previously we did see like both players relying a lot more on the Stinger Seas, uh, but the chaparrals have great rate of fire and therefore are able to get many missiles downrange. And you saw them flying past the camera as they were trying to engage the Cobra initially. Uh, both players, again, going to be selling off their extra transport units so that they can invest into more uh, command units. In this case, Derek's going to be bringing up the M1A1 Abrams CP, probably to drive into Delta and take that early on. Also has another command moving into Hotel. So Colonel Koenig is going to be forced to bring in his commands sooner than later, because otherwise it's going to leave him at a massive disadvantage. You can see that already Derek's managed to pick up 500 points from capturing all these sectors really fast. And there definitely is a way of getting a large advantage in this game very quickly at the moment. But uh, with the incoming changes, I believe the ticker is going to be slowed down. So that it won't be as viable to do this. Like rush down the game, that is. By capturing as many sectors as fast as possible. Um, but there, there is kind of like a counter to this, and that is quite simply being very aggressive. So because your opponents invested so many points into command units, um, there is often an opportunity, at least in one part of the map, where your troops are concentrated to push through very fast uh, and take a lot of ground on the map. So that is something I'd be looking for Kono Koenig to do here. Otherwise, it's just going to continue to bleed conquest points without really gaining much. Well, the M113A cav here takes a... HGM to the face doesn't go down just yet, but with that hit, will go down. Engineers there doing their job. So commands come in to capture golf now. That's going to take the lead down to just a plus two. And another Jeep now coming in for the cap onto Alpha, and that will sort of level things out. I would say Derek's still at a points disadvantage overall after that kind of devastating start that he had with his helicopters like losing that apache is really rough because the apache can be so strong but you just got to make sure that you, you use it in the right way and, and use it to pick off the heavier armored targets i'm surprised to see it early on because the hellfires are great for killing heavier tanks and Derek really hasn't seen any heavier tanks just yet so I can, I can kind of see why you'd want to gamble at the start and maybe bring one in uh, because you can do a lot of damage to sort of like this Bradley, for example, or um, any other sort of reasonably expensive armored targets. Uh, you might be able to get the Apache to pay itself off before it goes down. Uh, but in this case, the Apache is kind of useless for the time being because it can't really engage any of these targets and the chaparral is obviously still there now the chaparral is damaged quite significantly but if it manages to get a shot or two off it will sort of be able to plink at the apache enough that it might go down to the auto cannon of the bradley uh, also the chaparral does uh, six damage per shot so two shots and the apache goes down uh, the AH-1F Cobra here actually came through on this bottom side and uh, killed off the command unit of Colonel Koenig that's not good. Uh, he's actually going to be moving around the bottom side of the map here. And this, if it's left unanswered, could go straight for the command in the base. And there is no stinger or anything else really here to defend this. The Apache could come over and use its auto cannon to take down the Cobra. Uh, but yeah, this Jeep has to be super careful about this Cobra. Because if the, the Cobra gets to 20mm on... 
a target, the, the Jeep goes down very, very quickly indeed. And the N3A1 there getting taken out by the military police at the start. And this is why I'm not a big fan of the Bradleys at the moment, because they are so vulnerable to the sort of lighter AT options uh, on both sides. Um, either on the Soviet side, where you can get like the Metis infantry squads with like the HGM, they can take out uh, even heavy tanks very easily. Um, and then on the side of the NATO side, you've got the M67 with the recoilless uh, that can uh, just pop those Bradleys in a couple shots. And since the M67 at the moment has quite high rate of fire, uh, that makes it very easy. Oh, the Cobra, it has found it. The rockets are coming in at point blank. And the Jeep's going to go down and, well, that's put it to a plus seven. I think this game's not even going to last that long. <laughs> We've got a plus five after golf was recaptured by the Mutt CP, but this Cobra has done work. It's just flown through. And uh, this is why you saw in the first game the amount of stingers that are being placed around the map. All double phantom coming in. They're going to be engaging the A-10. Not able to shoot it down. But the phantom did go down in response. Oh, the Thunderbolt also getting some shots onto this phantom with its main gun. A nice choice actually by Colonel Koenig there to point his Thunderbolt directly at the Phantom because the Phantom head-on against the Thunderbolt is not going to do very well. And as you can see, one of them went down there and also probably got hit by the Stinger. So nicely done. Uh, Chaparral might get some easy get an easy kill here though, but I think that's not what Colonel Koenig is really worried about. He's about to lose the game. Um, there is, of course, only 100 points left to go. Thunderbolt coming round for the kill onto the Chaparral. Looks like Gunner Koenig's looking for his own command snipes, but Derek moving his away. And, well, that's it. That's all she wrote for this one. Damn, that was fast. Uh, well, <laughs> GG Derek. Uh, 800 kills, 730 losses, but it was all about those command vehicles. And it turns out that there is a meta where if you bring in lots of command vehicles at the start of the game, you can win very fast. And whilst this might not be the most interesting game for you guys to watch from a competitive point of view, uh, I, you know, it's it shows uh, something that has already uh, been sort of noted to the developers. And I will try and kind of point this out as I continue to cast these games. But of course, we are in early access and um, there are a lot of things to do with balance and such that are going to be fixed as the game goes on. And game speed is already one that has been adjusted. So... Uh, I believe in the next patch they are reducing it so that the time taken to get command points uh, is like plus two seconds or two it goes two seconds per tick rather than one second per tick so in this case uh, it almost doubles the time uh, that a game would take which slows down uh, the game a lot especially if you uh, get CV sniped like this um, which rapidly speeds up the game in the current build um, but yeah Either way, there you go. Um, yeah, congratulations to Derek. <laughs> Very uh, nice strategy there, using his CVs to capture nice and quick. Got the M1A1 to the center of the map to capture Delta as well. And that looks like it pays off. So Derek moves on to the semi-final. Colonel Koenig going to be knocked out in a rather unspectacular fashion, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, commiserations to him. Uh, but either way, that is it for this video. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Yeah,